Rub up your engines! American Pride says, is flex fuel worth it? E85. All right. For those of you who don't know, E85 is 85% ethanol, alcohol, here made from corn in the United States, and 15% gasoline. The problem is E85 has about 20% less energy, less British thermal units than gasoline. When you combine that with the way that the, it burns in a car, you're going to get 20 to 25% worse gas mileage. And usually the price differential doesn't equate. You're losing money on a deal. But of course, to the farmers and the Midwest, they love it. They're selling corn. They're making all this money. It does burn cleaner. Your car will pollute less. It will actually have more horsepower. So it depends on what you want to buy, what you want to put in. If you don't care about worse gas mileage, yeah. But a lot of people, if they're getting 25% worse gas mileage, they're going to throw that out. And they're going to say, no, I don't want to buy it. And of course, it depends where you live too. When I was in Texas, there were a handful of E85 stations, hardly any. You live in Nebraska, Iowa. They got tons of them and it's a lot cheaper. And of course, you're supporting the local farmers. The cars can run perfectly fine on them. That's no problem. The problem is the price versus the lower gas mileage. You think it's worth it for your situation. If you live in an area where there's enough of them around. Bob Media says, Scotty, love your vids. I traded my tooth. 2020 Kia Rio S with 20,000 miles and got a 2019 Honda Accord LS with 16,000 miles. Was it a good move? It was a fantastic move. You got a Honda Accord LS with 16,000 miles that can run forever and you got rid of a Kia. Now the Kia can be perfectly fine for a while. The Honda might go three, four, five 500,000 miles or more. The Kia will never do that unless it's all highway driving, which is 10% of city driving, so that doesn't count. The Honda could actually do it in city driving where the Kia could never do that. You made a smart move. And see, the thing about that is you can get away with stuff like that today. Back in the past, you couldn't. Nobody would have given you anything for the Kia. But the used car lots are so hot and heavy to buy and sell stuff that they don't care. They know, well, they paid you too much for that, but they're charging somebody else even more than that, so they don't care. It's just the money differential. Like the banks. Somebody might go to a bank and say, I got a loan and it was only three and three quarters percent. Yeah, if you've got a million dollars in a CD, it's paying probably a quarter of one percent. So they're still making over three percent profit. Same thing. So they paid you too much for the used car. They're selling it to somebody else for more and they don't care. So now is a good time to get rid of a car like a Kia get a Honda. It's a perfect time to do something like that. Opiates says, Scotty, should I buy Mazda 3 hatchback or Toyota Corolla? Now, if you're talking about a used one, I definitely go Toyota Corolla, but the new Mazda hatchbacks are a lot better than the older ones were, and you'd probably get it a lot cheaper as far as I'm concerned. If you're talking about new and they're about the same price, I get the Corolla hands down because you know that thing's going to last a really long time, and you might look at the Toyota Corolla hatchback. I checked one out in Rhode Island when I was there a couple months ago. Oh, man, that car impressed the heck out of me. The guy bought it for like 21 grand, and it ran like a top. Got phenomenal gas mounts. It was a beautiful car. Road fine. I would definitely go with the Toyota Corolla hatchback. And it was made in Japan where the best ones are made. Silence Scar says, I got a question. I'm thinking about buying a new EcoBoost Mustang, but heard they have oil issues. It would be worth to change the oil every five and not hammer on it. If you're talking about one of those four-cylinder EcoBoost engines, I don't like them. They wear out a lot faster. Probably is. The people drive like maniacs. Because you got a little four-cylinder engine that puts out 300-something horsepower. Then they beat the heck out of them and they do wear out. If you really don't don't hammer it and you're going to drive normal, it probably will last. It's the high rev kicking in the turbos all the time and not changing the oil, waiting for 10, 15,000 miles. But most people aren't going to buy an EcoBoost Mustang and not drive it fast. If you can really control your feet via your head and brain and you're not going to hammer on it, it probably could be okay. But like you say, most people buy those, hammer the heck out of them, and I never get one of those. You want a Mustang, you want to hammer the heck out of it, get a V8. Don't get one of those EcoBoost little engines. Brandon Talato says, Scotty, what's better, a new Toyota RAV4 or Honda CRV? You know, you know your cars. Those are the two best out there. Splitting hairs there. What do you like? They're both well made. They both can last for a really, really long time. For those, what I'd say is see what prices you can pay. Road test them both. See what you like better because they're both excellent vehicles. You pick the best two that are out there. You want to get a small SUV. Those are the best two out there. Basically, road test them. See what's out there. Now, if you're buying used, you got to pay a guy like me to check it out because you don't know if the previous people had them wrecked, flooded, stolen, if they maintained them or not. And a mechanic can tell that in an hour with all his testing machine. But you pick the two best ones out there. King and Queen says, Scotty, what's your opinion of an 05 Corvette? They were fast cars. 
Nice looking cars. They're two seaters, right? It depends on the shape it's in today. A lot of guys buy those things. They're toys. They keep them in a garage. If it rains outside, they won't even go to the grocery store. No, no, it'll ruin my paint. It'll spot it. And there's plenty of old ones out there that have 15,000, 40, 50,000 miles that are still in excellent shape. But on the other hand, if you're buying them from a young kid, a guy drives like a maniac, burn the heck out of it, it'd be a pile of junk. It depends on what the mileage is, who owned it, how it was taken care of. But they can be decent cars. Realize, of course, the tremendous gas hogs. If you're worried about gas miles, don't even think about buying one of those. But if you don't care, and if it's going to be a toy for you, and you're going to put 12, 1,500 miles, 2,000 miles on it, you really don't care about gas miles. Go right ahead. As long as the mechanic says it's in good shape now. Skid Mark Kid says, do you ever work on diesel vehicles? Oh, yeah. I used to work on a lot of them because for a while, you know, Mercedes-Benz is big as sellers were the 300 diesels and 300 turbo diesels when, you know, Dallas was big on TV with Jockey Wien and all that crap. They were all driving Mercedes Benzes and some of them were driving the turbo diesels. I worked on a lot of them, but diesels never really caught on in the United States because they smell and they are somewhat slower. The American market, they never got phenomenal gas mileage because they were generally in bigger, heavier vehicles. Those Mercedes diesels did not get phenomenal gas mileage because they were super heavy, big cars. They had a lot of pickup with the five-cylinder diesel with a turbocharger, but they weren't phenomenal gas mileage ones. Now, on the other hand, take like a Volkswagen Rabbit that was diesel. They got 40-something miles a gallon. They were phenomenal. But they were little cars, which Americans don't like, and they were pieces of crap with an automatic. Most people drove them, got standards, understand 95% of Americans now drive automatic cars, so they weren't popular then, so they never really caught on in the United States. IVA says, hey, what's your opinion on Audi 3.0? Oh, diesel engines. I think Audis are endless money pits. I'd never buy one. But on the other hand, those are very good diesel engines and they're very fast. But I've only ever met one man who was happy. That was when I was in Rhode Island because he bought a used one that only had 40,000 miles and he got it for like one third the price of the new one. And one of his high school friends was an Audi mechanic and he worked on it half price on the weekends at his house in his garage instead of paying twice as much at the Audi dealer. Plus, he's his friend. He was honest and he wasn't ripping him off. The dealers are always trying to rip you off, sell you stuff you don't need and all that stuff. That's the only guy I ever met was happy because he paid one third the original price and his friend was an Audi mechanic who worked on it and he didn't have that many miles on it. Even he said, I realize how complex these things are. If something ever goes wrong, it's going to cost a fortune. But they're diesel engines. They generally last quite some time. And with his friend being an Audi mechanic that charged them less than half of what the Audi dealer did, he was making out okay. Philip Sentmeyer says, what do you think of all these Hyundai Kia engine fires? Well, the problem is they don't build the engines right. And then the engines will lock up and start on fire or break and start on fire. A design flaw. They never did make their engines right. The engine fires are mainly because they don't build the engines right. They never have it, Kia and Hyundai. They've always had engine problems, burning oil. I had a guy, they, they, they fixed his engine, they said, and then the engine broke six months later, and they said, well, we fixed it once for free. We fixed it. It's Something else went wrong. That's not covered under the warranty. All nonsense. That's why I'd say stay away from those companies. Jonathan Grubmar says, should oxygen sensors all be replaced at the same time or only as needed? Oh, only as needed. Some cars have six oxygen sensors. Many have four. And the front ones, they don't even use really oxygen sensors anymore. They're called air fuel ratio sensors because they're a hundred times more sensitive than the old oxygen sensors. And some of those things are three to five hundred bucks a piece. So you don't want to go buying them just on a whim. Oh, I'll replace them all. Theoretically, they can last forever. If you don't have impurities in the gasoline you buy, if you don't have an oil burning engine that clogs them up with burned carbon, they can theoretically last forever. So there's no reason to change them unless they're not working right and you got to have a mechanic like me check that out. It's complicated stuff. Just because you have an oxygen sensor code doesn't mean the oxygen sensors are bad. It can mean that if your car runs rich, it'll trip an oxygen sensor code. Well, it's tripping it because the engine's running rich, so the sensor says rich, 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 and tries to make it go lean, and then it says, oh, oxygen sensor code. But it's not because the sensor's bad. The sensor is just the reporter telling the computer that there's a problem. It's like the old adage, don't shoot the messenger who comes to the king and says, we're losing the battle. Don't kill the messenger. He's not losing the battle. It's the soldiers that are losing the battle. <laughs>
Zach says, can you put E85 in a non-flex fuel? You can, but I would not advise it because it's 85% alcohol and your car wasn't made for that. It can ruin your fuel lines. It can ruin the fuel injectors. It can ruin the fuel pump. And your car is not set up for that. In a flex fuel car, they have special oxygen sensors. They have special different rubber lines. They have special fuel injectors. And they have special computer system that measures the percentage of alcohol and gasoline mix so it runs the car perfectly. Because it's not always going to be the same. Sometimes you might put regular gas, sometimes E85. So you might have 60% alcohol and 40% gasoline. And it will run on that because that computer knows how to do it. A normal car doesn't. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.